Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy. Here to help you. Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become a reality. Today's part 14 and a half in this time travel episode of the AI series, where we're going to talk about nav mesh generation at runtime and the optimization of that. If you watch the now last video of the AI series, AI series part 14, then you maybe noticed there was some stutter whenever the nav mesh was baked as the player moved throughout this large world. What we're going to do in this video is take a look at why was there that stutter, where were the performance issues, and what can we do to address those. On my machine, it takes about 170 milliseconds for it to bake that nav mesh at the runtime, which is a very slow number. We're going to profile where that comes from and apply some different optimization techniques. Now, these techniques might not all be applicable to your game and you may need to modify how we're implementing it to make it work better with your game. And I'll talk about those as we talk about each of the steps in this process. The scene that we're using in AI series part 14 and this video as well has about three or 4,000 nav mesh sources to consider. So it's a pretty large level and we can get the nav mesh baking time down to between three in 0.08 milliseconds. So you can do a lot of optimization here to really make this go almost completely seamlessly for your users. And before we go any further, I just wanna give a huge shout out to everyone who's supporting me on Patreon right now. I really appreciate it. Every bit helps the channel grow, reach more people, add value to more people, and that means that more people are making their game development dream become a reality. If you wanna help me in that cause, you can show your support on Patreon, patreon.com slash llamacademy. You can get your name up on the screen, you can get a voice shout out, and some other cool perks. We'll open up the profiler and make sure that the deep profile option is selected. This gives us a lot more information about what's being called inside of Unity. When I click play and start moving around, we'll see that the profiler graph comes up and we can see these really obvious spikes. I'll select one of those and we can see it's the area floor baker build nav mesh that takes 174 milliseconds and list.remove all actually takes 110 almost. That's almost 65% of the execution time. And the good thing is we actually don't need that. So if we open up the area floor baker, we'll scroll down to where we have sources.remove all and then we provide that remove nav mesh agent predicate. I'll comment it out. You can also delete it. The only important thing to note is that the player and enemies need to make sure that they are never on the same layer or the same space that's being considered for nav mesh baking. So if you're using collect objects children, that's very easy. You just make sure that the player and the enemies are not a child of the nav mesh surface and you're good to go. If you're using collect objects all or volume, then you need to make sure that you specify which layers to consider. And that actually brings me to this other point that on AI series part 14, we did this if condition at the top of the screen here on line 75, where we do one bit shift modifiers index by i dot game object dot layer. And in that we said equals to one, and that's not correct. And we should do not equal to zero. If we come back to the Unity editor, click play again and start walking around. We'll still see some pretty big spikes here, but it's a lot faster. If I select that area floor baker again, we see that it's 68 milliseconds now, which still isn't good, but we can see that navmeshbuilder.collectsources and component.get components and children are the biggest offenders here. But there's also a lot of GC alloc from a list.add. And GC alloc is one of the big areas that makes your code take longer, both from an allocating and from a cleanup perspective. We'll open up the area floor baker again. And remember that collect sources was the biggest offender by far. And then we had things like get components and children and then the additional GC alloc of the list, right? So the way that I'm going to do this optimization is actually make us just not have to call collect sources or get components and children anymore by caching the references to the nav mesh modifiers, to the nav mesh build markup, and to the nav mesh sources. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky because if you're using a procedurally generated level, you can't cache just all these references up front. So we're first gonna talk about the large scene that's already generated, and we just wanna bake the nav mesh in small areas around the player. Let's start there. In this kind of scenario, it is safe to pre-cache all of these things because the level's not changing a whole bunch at runtime. So we can say, give me all the markups, give me all the sources, give me all the modifiers, and we'll cache each of these per nav mesh surface. And when we have them per surface, then the baking for each surface is very fast. You have to be careful because if you do need to add in additional modifiers or additional sources, then you need to make the call to collect sources again, which will clear your sources list and then repopulate it. And that's where you get a lot of the GC alloc because you're saying, I no longer need references to whatever was there before. 
and then we're going to add a whole bunch of new elements into the sources list again, which again is more GC Alloc. So what we're implementing right now is really good if you do not have a bunch of changing sources and modifiers. But in those cases, probably you would just pre-bake the entire nav mesh because nothing's changing. So let's talk about a procedurally generated level. How could you apply the same concept to a procedurally generated level? You cache them still. Maybe if you know approximately how large your world will be and approximately how many nav mesh modifiers and how many sources approximately will be considered per chunk that you're going to spawn, then you can pre-allocate all of these lists to be approximately the size that you need, which would help you with the array resizing that happens under the hood of the list, which would make it go faster. What you can also do is whenever you're spawning new chunks into your world, you can get the modifiers and collect the sources from that section and add those into these lists that we already have. That way you don't have to redo this, getting components and collecting sources again. If you manually construct your own nav mesh build sources, instead of using the collect sources, whenever you spawn the chunks, that can also help you manage this array allocations that really slows down the baking process. And if you're manually creating these nav mesh build sources, then you don't need to execute this collect sources on the main thread like we're doing here, and it can be done in the background, which would also help you with your performance. It's really hard to offer a tutorial on this where we're gonna do the procedural generation and then do the optimization because that's really specific to whatever you implemented for your game and how you do the procedural generation. And there are so many ways to do that. I can give you a tutorial maybe on a specific implementation of that, but it might not be transferable to your game. So that's why I'm kind of talking about just the process that you would go through to apply these optimization techniques to your procedural generation. Now that we have the theory, let's start implementing that. On the area floor baker, we're going to change the list of sources to a dictionary of int and list nav mesh build sources, and I'll call it sources per surface. If we scroll down and look at our build nav mesh, we also see there are two other lists here, the list of nav mesh build markup and the list of nav mesh modifiers. And since we also will have these per surface, Let's get those list allocations out of this function, bring them up to the class level so that way they can be cached per surface and do the same thing. So we're gonna cut these from here, come back up to the top and convert those into private dictionaries of int to list of nav mesh build markup and rename it to be markups per surface. And then again, change the modifiers to be a private dictionary of int to list of nav mesh modifier and we'll call it modifiers per surface as well. Then on awake, whenever we're registering our nav mesh data with the nav mesh, we will also create new lists for each of these surfaces. So we'll do sources per surface dot add i and a new list of nav mesh build source. And we'll do the same for the markups per surface and the modifiers per surface where we'll create a new list of each of those appropriate types. I'll then scroll down to the build nav mesh function. And now that we don't have a single list anymore, we have a dictionary of int to list. We need to change everywhere we have modifiers. We're going to change it to be modifiers per surface keyed by index. We'll change markups.add to be markups per surface keyed by index.add. And whenever we're constructing the nav mesh build markup, we need to make sure we're using modifiers per surface keyed by index. And then we index that list by i. So it looks a bit weird. We got the double brackets, but we need to get the appropriate list and then the appropriate element from that list. On the collect sources call, we need to make sure that we're using instead of markups, markups per surface keyed by index and sources per surface keyed by index as well. When we're doing the update nav mesh data, we also need to make sure we're referencing the sources per surface keyed by index and then we should have updated everything here so they work with the dictionaries but that's not quite enough yet we want to make sure that we don't come in and overwrite our lists when we don't need to just caching them but then not referencing the cache and making sure that we skip over stuff when we don't need to doesn't give us any performance benefits it's actually worse because we're using a lot more memory and then we're still calculating everything every time so at the top we're going to come up here and say if we're collecting objects of children and the modifiers per surface keyed by index that count so the list of modifiers for this particular surface if there are i put does not equal to zero it should be if it equals zero i'm going to change that in a second but if there 
are not yet any modifiers for the surface, then and only then should we get the components and children to get the nav mesh modifiers. We'll check else if surfaces keyed by index dot collect objects is not equal to children, meaning it's all or volume, then we want to assign the modifiers per surface keyed by index list to be the active nav mesh modifiers. But we actually need one more level of if here because we want to check that if the modifiers per surface list for this particular surface has no elements in it then we want to actually check and assign these modifiers per surface and construct the markups list so we'll check if modifiers per surface keyed by index dot count is equal to zero then we're going to take these if conditions the else and this for loop inside of that if and you know what actually it shouldn't be the modifiers per surface we're talking about here i'm i messed up it should be the markups per surface surface because we actually don't care about the modifiers other than to get the markups. So we're going to we're going to change that real fast to be markups per surface keyed by index dot count. If that is equal to zero, then we will collect the modifiers and then we'll iterate over the modifiers to build the markups list. So on this else, if the surfaces keyed by index dot collect objects is all or volume, we will also check if the modifiers per surface list is empty. If that list is empty, then we will assign it to be the active nav mesh modifiers. And like I was saying a minute ago, this optimization is to make sure that we do as little list modification as possible. In your game, you may need to modify this logic to not check if these lists are empty based on how you spawn objects into your scene. You need to be very careful that you do check if you are adding new nav mesh modifiers at runtime. And if you are, then this logic will need to change. Now, the last optimization we're going to do is that collect sources optimization. So I'm actually going to come to the top and add a private bool serialized field cache sources. That way in the inspector we can toggle whether we want to cache the sources or not. And then we'll come down to the build nav mesh again and say right above where we're going to do the collect sources if not cache sources. So if we would like to collect sources every time or if the sources per surface keyed by index that count is zero. So if we don't have any sources for this particular surface, then we will collect the sources. So if you are not actively changing the nav mesh sources at runtime, then you can turn on cache sources and we will only collect sources one time per surface. And that saves us a lot of list allocations because remember that collect sources was actually the biggest call at almost 70 milliseconds seconds in our profiler. If we hop back to the Unity editor, I'm going to adjust the include layers of our nav mesh surfaces to be include layers floor only, because remember that we removed the agent removal from our area baker, which means that it, if we use collect objects all or volume, it will consider our enemies in our player, which would not work correctly, right? So we need to make sure that we layer mask this to only include the floor. Now leave everything else alone and click play. And as we start to get some profiler samples, you can still see there's a little spike, but it's actually pretty hard to tell where this is. So I got lucky and clicked on it because I kind of got where it falls on the profiler. But we can see our setup coroutine move next is only 2.6 milliseconds. If I expand that, our area floor baker build nav mesh takes 2.6 milliseconds exactly down from it was 68.4 milliseconds before. So we can see there's this very small spike on each time that we bake this floor. Two milliseconds is very short amount of time to bake this. So that's a really good result, but I think we can do even better. So we'll do collect objects all. So we don't have to call get components and children anymore. And again, we can kind of see where this spike comes from just based on where it falls on the profiler, but our area floor baker build nav mesh takes point one milliseconds. That's amazing. At the beginning, we had 170 milliseconds and now we're down to point 0.1. And actually, I can't I can't find where, where else it gets called as I'm scrolling through here. It's really hard to tell because the coroutine delay calls is so fast. So that that's a really great result. That's the power of caching these things so we don't have to recalculate them and we don't have to do the array resizing that happens under the hood of a list. That's phenomenal. So we had a hugely stuttering 170 milliseconds before down to 0.1 milliseconds here. Again, please apply these optimizations about caching these things very intelligently in your game. You may not be able to use this out of the box exactly as I've written it here. Consider how you spawn your chunks on a procedural level and 
what happens in your game. You may need to do more complex things like manually building your nav mesh sources to really get this level of optimization. But these are the high level tools that you need to optimize your runtime baking of nav meshes. I hope you got a lot of value out of this video and you understand how to optimize your nav mesh baking at runtime and which techniques will work for your game and which techniques you might need to modify based on the implementation that you're using in your game. If you have been getting value out of this video or the series, please consider liking and subscribing to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. There are new videos posted every Tuesday and sometimes on other days too. If you have any questions, if you have a suggestion for a topic, or if you're implementing AI into your game, drop a comment down below and I'll see you on the next video.